that's really important. So I want to uh, thank Dr. Robbins for his leadership, certainly. Can't do this without strong and steady leadership. Um, we have an outstanding president who cares deeply about the entire university and positioning in the correct way. Um, and athletics plays a key role in that. And we're excited about uh, where we're headed. And again, I want to thank him for his, uh, his guidance and his leadership on that. So with that, I think we'll open it up. We we'll look forward to the conversation this morning. Questions? Dr. Robbins, what details can you give about the deal that Commissioner Clay Alcock presented to the CEO group? I think, I think the things that I've seen in the uh, press reported are pretty accurate about the deal uh, that Apple provided. Uh, I think the keys were uh, the $23 million a year per school and uh, no games on linear access. I think those were the two things that were problematic for uh, people when they were evaluating the um, long-term long sustainability of the contract, and of course, that it was subscription-based. I think we'll continue to recruit well in California. Um, you know, uh, I, I think a lot of students do come here because of athletics, uh, meaning not just the players, but because of the experience. Um, getting to go uh, to a game in Arizona Stadium or McHale or uh, go to a softball game or swim meet. Um, but I think we'll always recruit well in Southern California and all of California and the West. But uh, as Coach Fish has proven, um, you need to recruit your own backyard, and we need to always recruit first in the uh, state of Arizona uh, and then uh, continue to do the great job we've done in California. I, I don't think this move uh, hurts that at all, but I'm not an expert on that. Uh, I, I am very, very excited about this move to the Big 12. It's going to be uh, an exciting new direction for us. Um, Obviously, I've been a Pac-12 guy for a long, long time. Uh, even growing up as an SEC guy, watching Pac-12 games. And, you know, my hope some way, there's a way to keep the conference together, but without a TV deal and uh, with just, just a few schools left, uh, then I, I think that it's going to be a problem. But I am very excited about uh, moving to the Big 12. Yeah, sure. We, we've looked at that, um, examined the different travel distances and the hours involved and um, how we would go about doing that. And uh, quite frankly, it doesn't have a significant change. There is, depending on how we go in the future, how we look at the different scheduling models, um, how it can be divided up, there is a chance that it could be uh, save, it will save us at some cost as well. So uh, we like the alignments, the programs, the destinations. It offers... Um, Good opportunities for our teams to compete, but also opportunities to travel into those venues, into those cities without a, a significant amount of trouble. Michael Lev, yeah, Michael Lev, Eric Sarney, start. President Robbins, end of the day, what was the basis of this? Why do you think uh, this was the best route for Arizona? Well, I think it was the, um, as I outlined the terms of the, the deal, uh, I think after long and careful analysis of the deal, uh, combined with, um, you know, the decisions that we all had to make, make in the best interest of our university. Uh, obviously, we were talking to uh, President Crow and President Randall at Utah, and uh, we just thought this was the best direction for us to move forward with. Uh, for, uh, you know, the, the students here, uh, our fans, uh, our faculty and staff, and the state of Arizona. Um, we thought the future was going to be brighter um, being a member of the, of the Big 12 and all of the um, opportunities that that affords. us. Uh, I think they've been very aggressive. I like that. I, I think they're thinking about new ways to, um, to highlight the conference. And I think our, our students uh, and uh, coaches and staff will, will appreciate that approach. Uh, to college athletics. 
Um, and, you know, it's, it's not an all streaming deal. Um, and, and I think people, you know, certainly families who can't travel uh, want to be able to see their, uh, their, their loved ones on TV. So I, I think it's a very exciting deal for us. Pat Harris from Tate and I, uh, Dr. Robbins, Dr. Crow talked about you guys were joined together and you were not going to, he said you were not going to you know, stray apart from one another. Tell me about that process and, 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 and how you were able to bring them along or, or how did it go? Yeah, I don't, I don't think there was anybody bringing anybody along. Uh, um, this was something that I thought uh, the two of us uh, thought it was in the best interest of the state uh, for both of our universities, um, for the rivalry, for us to stay together. I mean, I, I watched what happened in, in Texas with Texas and uh, um, uh, Texas A&M, and you saw Coach Gundry get pretty fired up at the press, you know, the media day for Big 12 about, you know, Oklahoma made the decision to leave us, and it. You know, Bedlam this year is going to be real Bedlam. This will be the last one for a long time. I hope that they'll continue to play. We didn't want to get into a situation where um, where we just kept the Territorial Cup forever because we got it. We wanted to stay together. But the Regents, um, the Regents were very supportive uh, and, and really liked the fact that, that we were in, interacting so much. I mean, hundreds of calls between uh, uh, the uh, presidents and uh, others over the last several days. Um, it, it was really interesting on Saturday, I had no calls. My cell phone did not go off until, uh, you know, about 7.30. Um, President Randall called and said, yeah, I've been talking to you like, uh, you know, every other minute. Uh, and just wanted to see how you're doing all this stuff. And I was, I was going to text you and the President Pro. So it was pretty intense. Um, I kind of, I kind of liked the, you know, the grind of it and, and trying to get something decided um, because we got to move on. You know, the next episode is this year. We've got to play this thing out and go out. Uh, you know, hopefully winners. I, I always say the goal for every team is undefeated season and that of course is not possible but uh, that's where we all start and so I'm looking forward to finishing this season out strong with the Pac-12 but very excited about the the new journey and the next episode with uh, with the Big 12. Yeah, I think at the end of the day, um, you know, look, we, we were, <laughs> I think we were all expecting Friday morning, we were showing up together to sign in blood uh, our grant of rights over to the, uh, to the Pac-12 conference. And, um, you know, we were notified uh, by, I, I guess they must have split us up. I, I got called by one of the presidents and said, look, this is tough, but we, um, we came to an agreement with the Big Ten uh, you know, 10 minutes ago, and I just want to give you a heads up before we, we get together uh, as presidents and chancellors that we'll be, we'll be taking our talents to the Big Ten. President Robinson, David, coming to Wildcats 1291, one question for David and I. What background can you give us on when you initially started talking? Yeah, I'll, I'll go first. When it started, I, I don't know when it actually started. You know, I was in Texas for four and a half years, and uh, I got to know a lot of presidents and chancellors down there. Uh, I, I would say when I got to know them really well was a few days after Oklahoma and Texas announced they were leaving uh, because they were in the same situation. They were looking for a home. And... Uh, you know, I, I, I thought that would have been a great idea to take the eight remaining schools, bring them in with the Pac-20. It didn't turn out that way. Um, but I started developing relationships with those presidents and chancellors then. And, and I think you all know that uh, 
Bob Bowlesby is one of the uh, you know most respected leaders in athletics, I would say, in the last uh, quarter century, and and we happen to be long-term friends. And so I started talking to them then. But I think uh, I think for this particular you know flip the table, we're we're going to them now. Uh, I, I would say over the last uh, six months, um, there have been there have been people reaching out who I have, you know, good relationships with, um, and and I think I I only talked to the, our commission, new commissioner uh, one time. I think I at the final four was the last, only time I remember actually sitting down and talking to him, and and I've been consistent in what I've said in the press. I can't think about entertaining an offer from the Big 12. I don't even know what our deal looks like. And I want to give that uh, uh, my full attention and see what the deal uh, looks like. And I think all the presidents and chancellors uh, in the Pac-12 did that. And I think Oregon and, and, and Washington certainly did that. Uh, and at the end of the day, it was, uh, I think it was just not a strong enough deal for everybody to stick together, which is unfortunate. Dave, what was the uh, uh, David, just uh, what's your message to your fan base, the message of your fan base who are unhappy about this? Well, all, again, as Dr. Robbins uh, mentioned, you know, our, our intention all along was to see what the Pac-12 um, could pull together, um, what that deal might be. Um, ultimately, though, this is a, you know, the environment in college athletics is moving quickly, it's changing. We've got to be able to adapt. We need to make sure that we can um, put the university and our athletics program in a position to be nationally recognized, nationally competitive, to allow our student athletes to compete at the highest level. Um, those, those are critical to our athletic program. So when, when I look at it, you know, it's about sustainability, it's about um, stability, it's about guaranteed revenue planning, um, those are critical for having a balanced and an appropriate athletic program. Um, and, and I think this grows our ability nationally. We, are, we have opportunities to be exposed in all the different time uh, zones across the country. Uh, we compete, you know, in a way, coast to coast. I think it can really help our program grow as well. So uh, fans have the opportunity to be engaged at a whole different level. Uh, finally, you know, we're on a platform both linear and uh, you know direct to consumer opportunities that really allow our fans, our alumni, um, recruits, parents to see these this program at a very high level on a regular basis. Um, I, I think he's uh, very engaging, uh, very aggressive as a heart surgeon. I like that. He uh, he is um, he has he has a set of goals he wants to achieve, and you know the uh, he does it in consultation, as I understand from my friends in the Big Twelve with the presidents and chancellors in consultation with them, uh, and uh, collectively they've got a vision for what they want to see the Big Twelve evolve to, um, and I I like that aggressiveness and. Uh, and, you know, just in the t times that I've talked to him, we've had very positive conversations. So I'm looking forward to his leadership. Wow. How long? We should talk. <laughs> we should talk later. <laughs> I mean, that's a long, long conversation. You know, we want to get into the whole, you know, uh, media industrial complex here. Uh, I mean, we want to open that up. I, I think that uh, to blame. Um, I look. I think there. If if people if people want to start blaming people, there are plenty of people to blame. You can make your own narrative, which. Many people have, um, but I think I think the um, no question that uh, the media companies have had a big influence on this. You know, I, I would love to see the day uh, when the university 
presidents and chancellors said, what a second, we're pretty smart here. Why don't we organize ourselves and we're in control? I don't see that happening for a while, but that would be the goal, right? Is, uh, is we would be the ones that were uh, engaging with the media companies um, to sell them something that was valued, other than we getting whipsawed around and moved here. I mean, I, I, I'm hoping we're gonna be with the Big 12 for a long time, but we may be part of, you know, mega conference united next. Uh, so I, I don't think there's blame. I think everybody's doing what they think is in the best interest of their universities, themselves, media company. I mean, we had conversations with Apple. Um, you know, uh, I, I think Apple is one of the most innovative uh, companies in the world, one of the most successful companies in the world, but they had a business model also that they have to make money. They're, they're not just investing money for the fun of it, they had to make money from it. So I understand it, but I don't, I don't think there's, there's blame. I think people, if you want to go back to USC and UCLA, I, I can't fault them. They're, they're trying to do what's best for their university. Um, do I like it? No, I'm sad about it, but we, we all got to move forward. I echo it as well. I mean, just I don't spend a lot of time trying to blame people on for anything, um, and I don't think that's a, a good use of any energy at all. We've got to just move forward. Um, and media companies clearly have a huge influence on this, and uh, but we need to make the right decision for our program, and that's what we spend our time focused on. How do we make the right decision for the University of Arizona and our athletic programs? I don't think we spend a whole lot of energy worrying about who's causing and what's happening. Yeah. Brett, Jay, Brett, Mary, and all the other side. David, it's like kind of rain but a lot of talk about this is sort of a change for regionalization that college sports has had for so long. Do you expect at the Olympic and non Olympic sport level that we'll actually see regionalization sort of in terms of these conferences where there are sports, for example, like beach volleyball where the Pac-12 was such a catalyst getting that going, but now well, I think uh, I, I would start with saying that in reality, the move that we will make a year from now um, offers a great deal of regional regionality to it. Um, it allows us to stay in a in a footprint nearby uh, and compete with. You know, common opponents that, that we know, and some that we've competed with in the past, and um, but so I, I think it offers the ability to stay with that to a degree inside the conference. Extrapolating what's going to happen way along in the future, um, I don't know. I think actually it stabilizes to a degree. Um, uh, beach volleyball. You know, we had other institutions that left. There was not going to be much of a beach volleyball. You know, if, using that as one example. Um, you know, now we have. A number of teams inside future Big 12 that would be able to compete with each other. So I think we can grow that sport as well. So um, I like the opportunity to be somewhat regional. Now we may just be directionally, instead of going further west or north, we're, we're going to go a little bit east. We're going to be in Texas. We're going to be in the upper Midwest. I think those are good moves for us. Okay. Fox Sports 1450. For either one of you, between the time USC and UCLA left, time when you thought this was going to be the most likely outcome, um, or, or in other words, how confident were you that the fact that Bob could get you the No, I, I was very confident. Um, market forces changes, the economy changed, the media companies we were just talking about, some of them went through some hard times, <clears throat> but all the while I, I was confident that, uh, that we would get a, a deal that we would all like and it would keep us together. Uh, uh, so, I, I think things didn't really change until right at the end, um, but it, it, and it took long, uh, longer than I thought. I mean, I'm famously, infamously quoted as saying, well, I think we'll have something by tax day. I didn't say what year, but anyway. <laughs> uh, and, and so it took longer, and I think the longer it took, I, I actually thought the longer it took, the uh, 
the more that the media companies could uh, turn their temporary bad fortunes around and come back to the table, the economy would get better. So I thought the longer we waited, uh, at least more recently, the better that would be. But there, there certainly um, came a time when we, we, we had to do it because I kept saying, oh, we got another year. We got another year. Well, now we're inside a year. So uh, I think, and all of you, you know, you were ready to move on and close that chapter of writing about it and get on to writing about the upcoming uh, season, which we are very excited about. I think this, ironically, could be one of the greatest seasons in Pac-12 football, it, at least since I've been around. Ooh, I haven't thought about that one. Well, there's, uh, I mean, if you're from Utah, yeah, you should go up to Utah and cover that scene. I, I, I mean, I'd love to know what's going on up there. But think about it. Uh, BYU and, and Utah get back in the same conference again. That's going to be, it's always been a rivalry, but now they're in the same, they, they will be in the same conference. Uh, obviously, we're going to have the Territorial Cup in uh, ASU, and I think that, um, People in the Big 12 respect that kind of thing, and I think there'll be a lot of people that'll they'll be interested in what happens in that game. Bedlam, you know, that's that's one that's going away for them because they're going through all this stuff. Um, so I don't know. I mean, obviously, ASU is going to be always be our our biggest game and, and rivalry game, um, but you know. I haven't done the math on how far, or looked up how far it is to Lubbock, but Texas Tech is pretty close to us. Uh, you know, Oklahoma State, uh, they, they're they looking for a rival. Uh, maybe we emerge. And I, I just have to say, we, we haven't talked much about uh, academics, but we've had, um, going back to the question about relationships and how long we've we been talking to Big 12, We've got an incredible partnership with Oklahoma State University. And I believe in the next three to five years that this partnership with them and the University of Arizona will produce uh, a non-opioid, uh, non-addictive analgesic. Uh, we already are working together on a, uh, a, a more powerful antidote to fentanyl. And you know how many people are dying from fentanyl. So, there are academic and, and other reasons why this partnership is really good for us. Um, but I don't know, Dave, you, I, I, I should have thought about that more before today about what the rivals are. Let me, let me run through my head and I may blurt one out. All right. Well, one, I'd say, hey, there's some really neat uh, new destinations for our fans, uh, our teams, our players, our student athletes to, uh, to experience. Um, I think rivalries uh, certainly the group up north is, is our main rival, and that will always be an incredibly important game on all of our schedules. But I think rivalries happen organically, you know, competitively. I think there's nuances inside of each, each one of our sports that uh, could drive them to have rivalries within the, the new um, and expanded Big 12. And I, I think that's what will be fun to watch that grow through the years. Yeah. Anointing certain rivalries, I don't know. I think partnerships and, and, and con continued collaboration will be really important as we go. Well, I was telling Dave the other day, I was walking over to his office and we were just sitting around. We sat around and whiteboarded and what if to lot. Uh, what do you think is going to happen? Uh, but one that I don't know if it, it'll be a rivalry just out of the sheer fact that uh, uh, when I was saying to Dave when I walked in, uh, Mikhail, wow, if this goes one way, we'll, Kansas will be coming to McHale, and we'll be going to Fog Island. That that one in the immediate term, that's going to be intense rivalry. Uh, they're different. They're different, but um, I look. They've got great universities uh, uh, across the board, and they've got great programs in both football and, and basketball. I think I was. I think I have this right. If you look at the preseason top 25 football teams, if you include Texas, they've got four. Without Texas, they've got three. And we've got five. 
including UCL, uh, USC, and without USC, we've got four. So there's good football in both conferences, and I know Coach Fish is very excited to uh, uh, to compete in in that league and to get into Texas and. Uh, and start recruiting more. He, he already is doing it, but uh, I don't think we fall off that much in, in uh, California on the recruiting, as I said earlier. But yeah, I think early on, um, you know, story programs, Kansas and Arizona basketball, people are want to show up for that one. That's not true. Not true? No. Okay. Um, you also said that you basically didn't like the app, some elements of the app deal, but you were still willing to sign on Friday. Everybody agreed to it. Is that true? Yeah, the, I, I think the Apple thing was very intriguing. Uh, I, and and the, the student athletes, they were, you know, if you go and look at what happens with uh, MLS right now, um, you know, it's, it was described to me, the, the technology, and you can imagine Apple being involved, the technology was uh, state of the art and the best and forward looking. So when a, when a player comes off the, the field, um, you know, they're given a file to download to their device and send out to their social media uh, account about all their highlights of that game. I mean, I don't know how you get that now. You're lucky that uh, well, we, we we video all the games, but are the players really going in and putting together their own highlight reels? So parts of it were very, very compelling and exciting. And it was Apple. Um, and it was, you know, in, in our backyard. And um, But I think the, the base price, the guaranteed price, the fact that there was no linear and that it was subscription-based, none of us, you know, we were trying to think, well, it's going to be like, selling, uh, you know, candy bars for Little League or, you know, Girl Scout cookies. Uh, I don't know if Girl Scout cookies are, or you can say that anymore. But um, you get my point. You've got to convince three to five million people every year to sign up for $100 a year to watch uh, on a streaming only app. I think, I think, you know, if you're asking Oregon and Washington, they, they came to uh, the conclusion that that may not be the best deal, and when when they had opportunities for other deals, I think again, not blaming anybody, they made the best decision that they thought was in the interest of their university, and I, I will never fault anybody for doing that. Primarily, Dave and me back and forth on the phone, on Zoom, uh, but in person at the end. And I, I really value that. Um, I think, again, you're, you're always, um, our job is to make sure that we have an understanding of the landscape and uh, the what ifs. <laughs> so there was a lot, as I said, you know, the environment is, was relatively unstable. Uh, it has been for some time. So you're always thinking about the what ifs. So, but uh, we, we have the, I have these conversations with our coaches in general terms. They're providing me feedback in general terms with what they think uh, is important. Um, I know it's important to all of our coaches, um, one, to have a great experience for our student athletes, have a stable environment uh, that they can recruit to, that they can promote to, uh, an environment that, uh, you know, our fan base, uh, our student athletes, our recruits, their parents can see watch the games and be connected to those games, um, that, that's important. And that we can have a funding model, an economic model that allows them to be successful. I think, that, you know, those are those key considerations. And, and uh, there comes a point where we have to make a decision and there's only so many options that are there um, utilizing the abundance of that information. Um, we didn't have a, 
looking at all of our coaches, and I appreciate a lot of them being here and a lot of our staff. You know, we didn't have a, a full-out think tank, but uh, we have that on a regular basis. Our program is really open. We talk about a lot of different things, and uh, you know, we're engaged all the time. Yeah, I, I would say thank you to all of you. You know who you are. You spent literally hundreds of hours uh, vacation, uh, weekends, getting on the phone, talking to us, working with us, making our schedules work, helping us with travel, doing all those things. Um, it, was, uh, it was a complicated and uh, chaotic time, but uh, I think we all just kept grinding and did the best we could to make the decision for the best interest of the University of Arizona. Because at the end of the day, that's what we're fiduciaries of is this great university uh, to try to put our students uh, in the best position to compete, try to put our university in the best uh, position, and uh, one that that will be sustainable and last. And I'm, I'm honored and blessed to be a part of this, and I know Dave thinks the same thing. Uh, and, you know, uh, if you go back to the blaming game, well, you could blame – you know, lots of people, but let's just look forward and live life through the windshield, not the rear view mirror. And we, we're very much looking forward uh, to this upcoming season. Coach, how many days is it? 20, 26 days and counting before we kick it off right here. And uh, I'm, I'm looking forward to uh, this season and all of our sports and academically. There is so much that I could talk about here uh, for an hour, Osiris Rex. Don't forget about Osiris Rex. It's in that capsule is landing in the Utah desert uh, in just a, a couple of weeks. Um, it's a, it's an almost 20 year mission that's taken two and a half years to get the sample back from the asteroid. So I could um, I could blind you all with science here, but I won't because I know Matt's pulling the hook here. But we're excited about the incredible things that are going on at the great University of Arizona, and uh, we're excited about this up upcoming season for all of our sports. I think it's going to be fantastic. And then we're very excited about the future, uh, the future opportunities and the future journey. We'll go on, uh, go along together. Uh, and, you know, you'll just be going to some different venues uh, to cover our games, and we look forward to seeing you out there on the road.